All right, here we go. On the docket for today's show, the one thing that the Philadelphia Eagles need to improve upon during the bye week to keep that record undefeated going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers next week coming off of the bye. That's what we have cooked up for today's show. Then we're going to start taking some questions from our loyal subscribers. So let's start to break this down here. The one thing that the Eagles need to work on during the bye week, sustain the offensive scoring. And I understand they've blown a lot of opponents out. They played a dominant brand of football, but really primarily their points have come in the second quarter. And as the season progresses, as the opposition makes some adjustments defensively, going up against this Eagles offense, when you start to get late in the year, and then when the playoffs come around, these games get tight. And you can't just rely on one quarter explosions. And that's what the Eagles have done so far this year. And that's what's carried them. Their 112 second quarter points are the most by a team in any quarter through six games in NFL history. It really is an astounding number when you break it down and if you decipher it. And they've outscored teams 112 to 27 in the second frame of ball games up to this point. Week one, they scored a total of 24 points against the Detroit Lions. Week two against the Vikings, 17 points. Week three against Washington, 24. Week four against the Jags, they scored 29 unanswered in the game, 20 in total. Against the Arizona Cardinals, their lowest scoring second frame of this year, only seven. And then last week against the Cowboys, how about them Cowboys? A 20-point explosion, which really gave them a cushion to win the football game. And this is crazy, too. In every single game so far this season, going into the bye week here in week seven, the Eagles have been up at least 14 points in every single matchup. That really does go to show the rhythm that they've operated with in the second quarter of games and how dominant this offense has been. Shane Steichen's probably going to get poached for a head coaching job. Brian Johnson, the quarterback's coach, might be a play-calling OC somewhere. And Nick Sirianni, he continues to have this offense humming. How about this? Let's compare the 2022 Eagles to other great Eagles teams that also started with a thump. The 2017 Eagles, they're up by 14-plus only once in the first six games of the season. The 2004 Eagles that finally punched their ticket to the Super Bowl. I was at that NFC Championship game at the link against the Atlanta Falcons. I'll never forget that Brian Dawkins hit on Algie Crumpler. They were up 14 plus in five of six games to start the year. And really the big question for the birds, is this sustainable for the entire duration of the season? I don't think so, because as the season progresses, when you get into the playoffs, the tempo is a little bit different. The feel of playoff games is a little bit more intense. And if you're going up against some of the top quarterbacks in the NFL, if it's in the NFC, if it's in the AFC in the Super Bowl, you can build that lead. But some of the elite quarterbacks in this league those leads don't matter. Look no further than a guy like Patrick Mahomes. So you might be able to build upon and support yourself with a really nice sizable advantage. But those other quarterbacks can come back. And if you can't counter with points scored, that's when the Eagles could find themselves in a very precarious spot. So are you worried about this Eagles offense? That is our poll question for today's show. I want you to get into the comment section right now and you tell me. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Today's sponsor is BetUS, the best sports book that has one of the best deals that any sports book has to offer. A 125% deposit bonus if you head to chatsports.com slash Eagles bet and use the promo code Eagles125. What that means is you put in $100 to your account, you get an additional $125 back. And because Philadelphia is the epicenter of the sporting universe, because of the Philadelphia Phillies and the Philadelphia Eagles, let's take a look at the odds to win the World Series. Right now, the Phillies, Padres locked in a very good NLCS. The Houston Astros are the favorites to win it all, even odds. They have a Westchester product on that team, by the way. And Chaz McCormick, he went to Henderson. I played against him back in high school. Awesome to see him doing his thing, hit a home run in game one of the ALCS. And the Philadelphia Phillies, San Diego Padres tied at plus 350 odds, followed by the New York Yankees at plus 
550. You want to get your bets in? Do so right now. Let's take the Phils. Hammer the Phils to win the World Series. Bring back another championship. 2008 was magical. Hopefully 2022 can be as well. It's chatsports.com slash Eagles bet. Promo code Eagles125. And since Philly is at the center of the sporting universe, rapid fire P. Type P in the comment section, especially if you're pushing that P. Now let's shift gears to the questions coming in from our loyal subscribers. Lou G is a G. A $50 Super Chat. I'm going to be in Houston for the Thursday night game, repping the Bird Gang. That's awesome, Lou. I wish I could get down there. So Chat Sports is based in Dallas, Texas. I'd love to go down to Houston. But my stepfather turns 80 in November. So I actually have to fly to Florida. And I think I'm going to be doing a watch party from Florida for that game. Maybe here. Either way, we'll be doing a watch party for that game. No worries. Lou G, I wish I could join you. Thank you so much for that $50 super chat. Another 50 coming in from Lou G, who already the MVP of today's show. Hurts progressing as a passer is a big key. Example, the first drive against the Cowgirls. He missed a third down throw to move the chains. And that's really what separated Jalen Hurts this year as compared to his first two years in the NFL. The footwork is a little bit tighter and a little bit cleaner. I think the arm mechanics, there's been some tweaks, and because of that, he's been more accurate as a passer. I think just because of the level of experience that Jalen Hurts has been able to get, he understands defenses more. He trusts himself more. He's been able to fit the ball into tighter windows. But I go on Coach Jason Brown's YouTube show every single Wednesday. He's the former coach of Independence Community College featured in Last Chance U. I go on there every single Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, so make sure you tune in. And I was talking to him about quarterbacks because he played quarterback, had a cup of tea in the NFL, and he's coached them throughout his coaching career. He still thinks that Jalen Hurts struggles with some of the anticipatory throws and making some of the throws that some of the elite quarterbacks in this league make. And I agree with him on that. I think he's gotten better with the anticipatory throws and some of the touch on his throws. I think always he's really flourished with throwing that deep ball, but he can get a little bit better there. But what he offers is what guys like Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers do not. And that's that running threat that does make him a very unique weapon. Lou G, thank you for your donations. Nick Stone, another one of our great subscribers with this. Should we make a trade for Brian Burns and make one for Cam Akers? This is something that we continue to talk about here on the show. I mean, Brian Burns would be my number one dream trade target for Philadelphia because he's under contract next year at a pretty affordable price. I think it's like $10.5 million. And since he's come into the league, since being a first-round pick out of Florida State, he's been one of the best edge rushers in the game. And if you look projecting into the future, Fletcher Cox, Siobhan Hargrave, both free agents. I'd like to see both of them back. Brandon Graham, also a free agent. Like, you have to start building that defensive line for the future down the road, and Brian Burns, still a young player, one of the best and most elite edge rushers in the game. I'd love to see him make a trade for him. Cam Akers, he's appealing because he's still young in his early 20s. Ball security issues, certainly a problem. He hasn't gotten going this year, partially because of the ball security problems, but also that Rams offensive line, so bad, and they have the 31st ranked rushing offense in the NFL. Kara Poole, who do you think we need to re-sign? That's a really good question. James Bradbury honestly might be too expensive because you're already paying Slay $17 million next year. Can you afford to pay Bradbury $15 million? That's a lot for two cornerbacks in today's financial climate in the NFL. Um, so I'd say that he's certainly up there. I want to see Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox end their careers in the midnight green. It's just so weird to see them elsewhere. I want to see Miles Sanders back for like 10 mil. I think that would be a straight up steal. So those are a couple of players on my mind. CJ Gardner-Johnson, TJ Edwards, all of those guys really underrated um, acquisitions over time for Philadelphia. When you talk about the Gardner Johnsons and the TJ Edwards, I just love this team so much, and I want to see a lot of this nucleus come back. Kara, she is the mother for Philadelphia Eagles now. We do appreciate that question. Ismail, $20 Super Chat. My God, appreciate that. How do you feel about going after Kareem Hunt? I don't really think you need to. Um, look, if you're going to go after a back, I think it's one of the backs on the peripheries of the roster or a backup running back. I think if you make a trade, it's for a guy like Cam Akers, a guy like Melvin Gordon. I don't really think that you need that bell cow 
number one running back, which is what Kareem Hunt is, because you already have that in Miles Sanders. And honestly, I think Sanders can come on the cheap in free agency after this year. I don't think there's going to be a huge market for him because there's not often a huge market for running backs out there. Ryan Rowe, he has those notifications on. He's always the first commenter on our videos. Should the Eagles afford Jonathan Abram and Brian Burns to adding enough defense and getting enough upgrades to provide the defense with some talent to get some better chemistry. So Jonathan Abram, he's the safety linebacker hybrid for the Las Vegas Raiders. He was kind of made famous during hard knocks because of his personality. His game hasn't made, us, hasn't made him famous all that much. I mean, he has really struggled in coverage and he's bit on a couple of really bad play actions from time to time. And if you want to have him as that safety linebacker hybrid, okay. I do think that the Eagles need some safety depth on this team. When you saw C.J. Gardner-Johnson go out against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday Night Football, they struggled. I mean, Kayvon Wallace was bad. He was a turnstile on defense. So I actually think backup safety, along with edge rusher, two of the biggest needs on this team. Maybe Abram could be that third safety. Brian Burns, like I said a little bit earlier, Ryan, he's my dream trade target. When will the Eagles' first loss happen? That's our final question for you as we round out out of here on this mailbag. Let me know in the comment section. And as always, thanks for your support of Philadelphia Eagles Now.